Welcome to another Ganesha DX tutorial. This time we're going to talk about getting your map into the game. We're going to use a couple of tools to do this. The first of which is called Attack Out, which allows us to modify the scenarios. This will let us change which map each scenario uses or even what event script each scenario will use. We're going to be replacing our Magic Garland city map with our custom map. The other tool is Dravis, which will allow us to upload our map files to the disk image and overwrite some properties that allows us to slot our map into one of the 128 slots that are available within Final Fantasy Tactics for map use. So let's go ahead and get started. You can see I have a working directory here called Map Import Tutorial, and it's just on my desktop. We have one image for our vanilla Final Fantasy Tactics, and then I have a directory here called Custom Maps. I like to work with this structure where I put all of my custom maps in their own subfolder within a folder called Custom Maps. I have added my End of Time map and my Mako Reactor map. And in here we have our GNS and our resource files, but I also have all my working stuff in here, the palace that I used and the textures that I used, for example. And the same is true with my Mako Reactor map. So the first thing that we want to do before we do anything is that we need to create two copies of our disk image. We can do this easily by just clicking this file, doing Control C, then Control V, and it will create a copy of our vanilla image. I'm going to re rename this to FFT Source. And then I'm going to create a copy of that and call it FFT Destination. So this vanilla, we don't want to touch. We don't want to open it in CD Mage or modify it with Dravis or modify it with Attack Out. We want to leave it exactly the same because if we were to do something that ruined it, we would have to reacquire this disk image either by dumping it off of our disk itself or acquiring it through other means, right? And both of those processes are timely and consuming. So we want to leave our disk image alone. Then we have source. This is the one that we're going to edit with our attack out. We're going to use this to replace the event for Magic City Garland with one of our custom maps. And we have destination, which is going to be the output of what Dravis does after it adds our custom map to the disk image. It sounds a little bit confusing, but I think that as we go along, you'll understand. To recap, don't touch this anymore. We modify this and this is the output of our mod patching. So let's go ahead and do the first step, which is modifying the attack out. You want to go to ffhactics.com slash wiki slash tools, and the links for everything that I reference here will be in the description if you want to follow along, and you don't have to type that in yourself. So check the description, and we'll scroll down on this page, down to attack out editor special awesome. There's two attack out editors. The one that we want is the one called special awesome. And we want to click on the version number here. When we do, it'll take us to a Mediafire page where we'll just simply click download. We'll see that it is a RAR file, which is a file format very similar to zip files. However, you need special software to open it. Windows won't open it natively. And so if you go to open this as after it's downloaded and Windows says it doesn't know how, then you'll want to go to either win-rar.com or 7-zip.org. Both of these tools will allow you to open RAR files. I've installed 7-zip, and so that's what you'll see when I open the file. So go ahead and install one of these two if you need to. Otherwise, let's just open up our archive, and we'll see that it has one folder in it called Attack Out Editor Special Awesome, and we're going to just dump this into our working directory. And we can close our archive. So let's take a look at this directory here. We have an executable called Attack Out Editor Special Awesome, and we have two folders, and both of them are empty. What Attack Out will do is it will modify a file called attack.out. We don't have that file on our computer, so we have to get it off of the disk image. And we do that with CD Mage, like we have uh, previously when we were getting the map files off in the very first tutorial. So let's go ahead and open up our FFT source file and we need to use m2 slash 2352 
and open it right up and we'll expand this out and we want to click on the event folder and there's a file here called attack.out we're going to extract this to our working directory which is up here we can select our working directory very quickly we actually want to put it into into this dot out directory so we'll go to this directory and CD Mage doesn't let you drag and drop stuff out of it so what we're gonna do is we're gonna click up here and make sure that this entire path is highlighted and just press control C and go into here and press control V with this highlighted just like that don't worry about any of these settings and we'll just hit extract and it takes a moment and will tell us when it's extracted and then we're going to leave CD Mage open for now and just put it off to the side. Now we have a file in here called attack.out and its date modified is 1997 which is when the file was added to the ROM when they printed up the disks. So now that we have a file in our attack out directory we're going to run the executable attack out editor special awesome and it takes a moment to load even on my pretty quick computer it takes a moment to load so and we have this new window that has a lot of complicated stuff now I'm not going to go over all of this content that's in attack out editor you can find tutorials uh, on the FF Hactics uh, forums or you can just ask around on the discord somebody will definitely help you the important thing that we want to look at is the scenario list each of these items in the scenario list are a different event that happens in the game so the 0001 is when Ovelia is praying at the chapel of the Oborn monastery and if we scroll down we'll see this one is the event that happens at the thieves fort this happens at Linalia plateau this is one of the deep dungeons the event that we want to modify is 00009. I might have put too many zeros in there. And you'll see that we have the map choice is Magic City Garland and it's loading event script 0003. This is different than the scenario list. And if you were to get into eventing, you'd understand more about this. Again, we're not going to really cover this, but event 0003 is the one in which Ramza and his party appears in Magic City Garland. And the thieves say, oh, what luck, they're a bunch of kids. We'll beat them up quickly. That's the event that we're going to modify. So instead of loading up Magic City Garland map, we're going to load a different one. We're going to load map 118. The reason for this is because this map isn't used in Final Fantasy Tactics anywhere. It's a complete debug map. Final Fantasy Tactics has 128 slots of maps that are available. And the vanilla content uses about 120 of them give or take a couple which leaves us a handful of maps that we can slot our own content into what we're going to do in the long run is replace the map slotted at 118 with our custom map but for this first step we're just going to replace the event with using this map 118 we're not yet going to actually put our map files in there we'll use Dravis for that later so for this step, we're just going to replace Magic City Garland with this map. Now if we drop this down, you'll see that this is in hexadecimal format. And that's why we have 1A, 1B, all the way through 1F before going to 20. This is a base 16, where normally we count on base 10. So we go 0, 8, 9, 10. Here they go 1A, 1C, 1D, 1E, 1F, 2, 0, like that. Which means that we'll have to do a little bit of uh, calcul uh, converting of our numbers. So we can do this pretty easily with Windows Standard Calculator. You'll see that it says Standard here likely by default. If you click this hamburger tool, it'll allow you to choose a different program or a different uh, calculator method, which we're going to choose Programmer Calculator. And it changes our UI a bit. You'll see that we have hex, des, oct, and binary. If we click on decimal and we type in 118, which is the map slot that we want to use, it'll tell us the hexadecimal value for 118 is 76. And in oct it's 166, and in binary it's 111011. 
we care about the hex. So in hex, our map 118 is 76, so we're going to change this to 76. As we scroll through this, you can see that each of these has names that you're familiar with. Hospital and Slum, Slum and Gaug, Fort Zeekton, and so on. When we get down to 76, it'll just simply say unknown. And that's because it, it doesn't know what this map is. This is one of the debug maps. But that's the map that we want to use instead of Magic City Garland. There's a bunch of other options here. We're not going to cover that. This is the only bit that we care about for now. And we're going to export our dot out. It'll bring up this new dialog box. We'll click this drop down and choose attack. That is this file here, attack.out. And we'll just simply click save chosen out. And it'll say that it saved it successfully. And if we look in our file, we'll now see that our date modified has updated to my current time. This is March 9th at 7.50 in the morning about. We are now done with attack out and we can close this. We now need to put attack out onto the disk image so that when we play our game, it will use this new information found in attack out, which is why we left CD Mage open. Now we can do this pretty simply. We just right click on this and choose import file. Make sure you right click on attack out and choose import file. And we go to our directory where we save our attack out and we just say open. It'll take a moment and then it'll say file imported successfully. And that's it. Now we can close our disk image. We'll go back to, went back too far. We'll go back to map import tutorial. And you'll see that our date modified for our source has updated to right now in 3 9 2022 instead of this 2012 that was original. So let's go ahead and open this in our emulator and see what happens. We're going to open FFT source. I already have a save file set right before going into Magic City Garland. And so that's what I'm going to load. You can see right here it says uh, Squire Magic City Garland, so let's load that up. Now we can set up our units. We're just going to go ahead and jump right in and say yes. And here we go. So instead of loading Magic City Garland, we've loaded that debug map that we saw on the wiki. And it's playing the same event where the thief is saying, oh, just a bunch of kids, what luck. Have to kill these kids, which is pretty dark, actually. Kind of skip past that every time I've played, but it's a pretty dark, dark thing to say. And you'll see that the units are set up just like they were in the original event in the same general positions. It's just on this new map. So what we want to do next is replace this with our custom map. Right, so let's do that. We'll go ahead and close our emulator. And what we need to do in order to put our custom map files on the disk is use a tool called Jaravis. I'm going to close this calculator. We don't need it anymore. And we find that at jaravis.ffactics.com. Now what Dravis does is it allows us to add and modify files on a disk image. There's some instructions for patching a mod and installation. Don't worry about reading this. I'm going to show you exactly how to do it through this tutorial. So let's go ahead and just download the zip file for Dravis 2.00. If you're watching this in the future, this may have a new revision to it, and, but the process will be the same. So let's go ahead and open it up. And it has one folder in here called Office. And we'll just dump this right into our folder here. And we can close that zip file. If we go in here, we'll see that we have some directories and some files. The first directory classes and this directory called resources, these are part of what make Jaravis work, as well as these here. So we're going to ignore those. But we have a games folder. 
And in here we have two games, Test Game and Final Fantasy Tactics. We're not worried about Test Game, so we're going to go ahead and just delete this folder. And we'll go into the Final Fantasy Tactics folder. And we have some more files in here. Classes, again, is for Dravis. We don't want to touch these, and so is Defined Game Settings. We don't want to touch that either. But we do want to go into Mods, and we'll see that there's four default mods set up in here. We're going to go ahead and just delete all of these because we don't want to use them. Now let's go back to the main directory for Jaravis, where we have classes, games, and resources. And now we need a mod template for adding our maps. Luckily, we have one on this page. If we scroll all the way down under Supported Games, click on Final Fantasy Tactics. And under Mods, there's one here that says Mod Template. So we'll click this, and it'll download another zip. And when we open it, we'll see that it has a games directory. As we navigate through this, it says Games, Final Fantasy Tactics, Mods, template and then there's some more stuff in there. We'll go all the way back here and we will copy this from the zip file into this working directory. Make sure that you drop it into an empty field. You don't want to drop it into one of these subfolders or it won't work. We're going to merge this games directory with this games directory. And it'll happen so fast you won't even know that it's done. Now if we go into games Final Fantasy Tactics, Mods, we now have our template. Perfect. Let's go all the way back. So, before we can do anything, we actually need to install Dravis. We've only unzipped it and put it into this folder. And installing it is actually pretty simple. First, you need to go to nodejs.org and download the version that says Recommended for Most Users. Once you download this and run it, it'll ask you your typical installation stuff where you want to save it and agree to the, to the uh, conditions. Go ahead and just do that and install it and when you're done we'll continue. I've already done it on this machine so I won't do it here but you won't run into any surprises. So after you've installed it, we now after you've installed Node.js we now have to install Jaravis. It's pretty easy. We need to open a command line though in order to install this. We can do that easily by clicking into the address bar and typing in CMD. And that will open this window where we can type in commands. If you've never done anything like this, it can be pretty daunting, but luckily for us, for this process, it's very simple. All we need to do is type in npm space install and press enter. It'll take a moment to grab all the dependencies that Dravis relies on and it'll extract them and install them and when it's done it'll return us right back to this command line prompt if you didn't get any errors we'll just return here and Jaravis is now installed not too bad right now we need to set up Jaravis with our mod so let's go ahead and go into this directory Jaravis games, Final Fantasy Tactics, mods, and template. We're going to rename template to our mod, which if you remember I have two custom maps. One of them is the Mako Reactor and the other is the End of Time. So we're going to call this Mako Reactor. And in here we have an index.js which is for Jaravis. We don't want to touch this and we have mod.js which is our settings for this mod for the Mako reactor mod we also have an import folder which shows map template and then some dummy files in here that are 0k each first thing that we're going to do is rename this to Mako now this is going to be the directory that's written to the disk image if we open up our CD mage again We open CD Mage again and open our disk image, our source, using M2 again. When we expand this out, we we see that these folders in here. Well, if we look here, this says map. This is the same folder as this right here. Except we also have a subfolder in here called Mako, and then some files in here for our map. And what Jaravis is going to do is add a subfolder to this map named Mako 
and then put these files into that subfolder. One thing that seems to be important is that you want your this this directory to be called to be named such that all the letters are uppercase and you have eight or fewer characters in that name. I'm not sure if this is a strict rule or not, but if we look around on the disk image here, if we say click on event, you'll see that that is the case. None of these are longer than eight characters and they all have uppercase letters. So we're going to keep our structure the same. We're going to use that same convention just to avoid any problems that might arise. Sometimes it's best to, you know, when in Rome, we, uh, we act as though we're in Rome, right? So let's go ahead and close this. And we're going to name all of these Mako. So Mako.7, Mako.8, and Mako.gns. You'll see that these are 000k. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to grab the files from our working directory in Mako Reactor and copy them over into here. I'm going to go ahead and just delete these. And I'm going to grab my Mako Reactor .7, and our GNS right from here. I'm going to copy them into here. And we're going to rename them. One trick in Windows is if we click on one of these and press F2, it'll allow you to rename it and you can type in your new name. However, if you have multiple files selected and press F2 and type in your new name, it will rename all of those files with that same name. So we did that pretty quickly just by selecting all of these. And so now we have import map slash Mako and then Mako.7, Mako.8, and Mako.gns will be added to the disk image through Dravis. So we're almost done. We only have one more step to do, and that is we have to modify our mod.js. You can do this in simple notepad if you want. like you have on Windows, or you can use another notepad tool. I use Notepad++. does the same thing. Now if you're not a programmer at all, this is going to look pretty, pretty scary. Luckily, we don't have to worry about anything except for this chunk of code right here. You don't even want to modify this code, so just stay away from it. You'll ruin your mod if you mess around with it. There are three commands in here, and we'll look at each of these commands one by one. I don't expect you to understand programming after this, but you will understand these specific lines of code. This first line says create directory. And this is going to be the same directory that we have set up right here under our import map Mako. So we want to create the same directory in the code. So over here where it says map slash disk directory, we'll just replace this with M-A-K-O, just like this. This has to be the same right there. And then we're going to take the same Mako and on the second command, update map files. What this is going to do is actually, this first line creates the directory. The second line is going to copy these three files over to the disk. So we will put them in the right directory. We'll call them all Mako. Map.gns, map.7, map.8. Well, ours, is, ours are called Mako.7, Mako.8, Mako.gns. So let's update that as well. Now, I don't want you to be confused here. Because our directory and our map names are the same, it looks like this is the same as right there but if our maps if we call this say uh, m react for our map names then this would be m react right there so this first one is the directory the second one is our file name so i'm going to keep them as m react just so that we're less ambiguous about why we're putting these specific letters in these specific spots now on this side of this colon, see, see this colon, this is sort of a, this is a code thing, but what this, in, what this means specifically in this case is that we are going to update mreact.7 
to use the same information that MAP069.7 used. And the reason for that is because if you remember in an earlier tutorial, I talked about how you want to start with a map that is very similar to the map that you want to end up with. For me, I only make maps using one state, and so I want to use I want to start with a map that only has one state. And map 069 is is a perfect map for that situation. If you started with say map 45 and you modified each of the states and you have a lot more of these uh, resource files than I do, then you would use map 045 as the base and you just want to link these up. So the 7 to 7, the 8 to 8. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, if you're following along with these tutorials, then you should leave this as map 069 because that's what we started with. And that's what I always start with. And then that's it for this. If you do have one that has multiple resource files, like say yours has 7, 8, 9, 11, 13, 15, and so on, then all you would need to do is add a comma here, copy this line, and we would just do that for each of these. It's important that if you're adding more lines, that each of these lines ends in a comma. This is a JavaScript syntax thing, so make sure that they all end in a comma. We're not using that for this example, so we'll be fine with just this. Now finally, this last line will bind our custom map to one of those 128 slots that I referenced earlier. And we know that we want to bind it to map 118. So it will overwrite whatever content is assigned to map 118 with our content with these mreact files. So the first thing is we want to reference the directory structure that we have. And we need a reference to the GNS. So in our map, Mako subdirectory, mreact.gns will bind to slot 118. And that's it. That's all we have to do for this part of it. We have set up our mod and we are ready to go. So how do we actually apply our mod to our disk image? That's the next step. So we want to go into this mods directory where we see all of our separate mods. Right now we only have the Mako Reactor mod. And then we want to go into the Mako Reactor directory where we see import, index, and mod. And we're going to do the same thing up here. We need to run a command line command once again. So we'll type cmd into the address bar and we'll open our command line to the same directory. Desktop, map import tutorial, Dravis, games, Final Fantasy Tactics, mods, slash Mako Reactor. This is where we want to be when we do this next step. And that next step is, this is a little bit complex, so you make sure that you follow this to the letter. We type in node, space, period, space, wipe, space, two ampersand signs, which is shift seven space node space period space patch and this is our exact command so we'll hit enter and we'll immediately get one question and it'll ask us what is our mod image path let's go all the way back to our root directory here even beyond Dravis where we can see uh, our attack hour our Dravis and our discs disk images our mod image path is going to be our destination image. It's going to take this next, apply our mod to it, and then result in this, this disk image right here. Now the reason that we created the destination ahead of time, even though it's an exact clone of source, is because Dravis will complain if this disk image doesn't exist for it to write to. It's, it's a little, little wonky, but it's okay. So what we want to do is simply click inside the address bar and do control C and click into here and press control V and then press backspace or backslash and then we want to grab the name of this file make sure that you grab the whole thing also if you don't see this dot bin at the end you need to go to view and click file name extensions so that it's checked and we will select destination dot bin the whole thing and we'll paste it into here with control V. When you verify that this is the exact path to our destination disk image, 
we're going to hit enter and it accepts it. Now it's going to ask us for our vanilla image path, which is the same exact thing, except in this case, we want to use source. So let's copy our address again, paste it into here, backslash, and we'll copy this file name, FFT underscore source dot bin, and paste that there, and press enter. Now there's a little bit of a bug with uh, Dravis in this version. This may be different in a future revision if you're doing this in the future, but this bug will ask for the vanilla image path twice. So we can type that all out again, or we can use something that's really nice in Windows in the command line, is if you just press the up arrow key, it'll automatically clone whatever the last command that you entered in, whatever the last input that you put in. If you press up, it'll automatically choose that. And if you press up again, it'll choose the one before that, and if you press down, up and down will just go through all of the things that you've entered since running this command line. So we just want to say source.bin again. It's, it's a little bit of a bug, but it's okay. So we'll just hit enter. And when it's done, we'll have return to our command prompt. So let's go ahead and open this up in our emulator and see what we get. We're going to open our destination bin, because this is what Dravis wrote. Dravis did not touch the source bin, only the destination bin. So let's open this in our emulator. Now I've done something where I've set up a save state at this point right here. There, I did some frame skip there. At this point, I set up a save state. And you can do that by going into your emulator, press escape to leave that. And under save state, choose one of these slots to save it to. I'm not going to save over one of my slots. But when you're ready to uh, load your slot, you just go to load save, save state and load slot one or whichever slot that you put it in. The hotkey for this is F3. So if I return to the game and I press F3, it will automatically go back to this point. I'll go ahead and restart my emulator and you can see what I mean. See, I pressed F3 and we go straight to the memory card loading section. Now you want to make sure that your save state is before you load your memory card because it hasn't loaded any data yet. Once you do load from your memory card, the data in your save state is going to be different than the data on the disk image and it'll kind of flip out. So you don't want to do that. You want to, you want to do it at the point where it asks you to load your, your save. So we'll go ahead and do that here. This, that allows us to skip past the intro and choosing continue and all of that. And when you're debugging your maps and testing your maps, it will take some time. So we want to do that as fast as possible. Okay, so here we have uh, our setup screen for our battle. And we're going to just include Ramza and continue. And now what we should see is our custom map in place of 118. And there it is. That's the custom map that I made. And it has been slotted into 118. And with attack out early in the process, we told Magic Garland City Event to load map 118. So that's our entire process. This is getting your map into the game. Now there's one more thing that I want to show you. So let's go ahead and close this out. Say yes. And close that. Now, we can have multiple mods if we want. If we go into Dravis, into Games, Tactics, Mods, we can add another mod here. And I'm going to do this kind of the, the cheap way. I'm just going to control C and control V. And I'm going to call this end of time. And we're going to edit this end of time. We are going to choose a different directory here called end, end of time. I think that's too long. We'll just call it end time. And we'll go ahead and delete all of these. We'll also go into our custom folders directory, or custom maps directory, and we'll go into end of time here. And we're going to copy over end of time 8, 
7, 8, and GNS, and we're going to copy this over here. I'm doing right click to drag these, and that will give us this drop down menu that allows us to copy. You want to make sure that you're not moving your files over. We, we want to copy our files over. So I'm going to go ahead and rename these to fit the uh, PlayStation file format, and we'll just call this uh, we'll call this EO time. And this is the same exact process that we did with the Mako reactor map. We're going to open mod for end of time into our notepad, and we'll change this. We said that our directory here is end of time, or rather map slash end time and our files are called EO time so let's do that end time and I'll go ahead and copy this and paste that right onto there oops wrong one I gotta put on put on Mako okay and then we want to grab our file name and replace that and because we've already set this up with the previous time, you saw how fast I was able to modify my mod.js file using our new mod. So we can go ahead and minimize this. And now if we go here to, if we if we go back here and we do cd dot dot, which you can see that we're in Final Fantasy Tactics slash mod slash Mako Reactor. If we do cd dot dot, it brings us back up one directory. So now we're in the mods directory. And if you type in dir, it'll show you a list of all of the directories and files in this directory. So we can see that we are in the right place. So now we want to say cd, which means change directory, and type in end of time. Alternatively, you could have skipped all of that just by going up here and typing in cmd, and you'll see that we're in the same spot, right? Oh, this one was further further down the tree, but you get the point. We're in the right directory here. So if we type in the same command that we did with our Mako reactor map, node space node dot node space dot space wipe space ampersand node patch. If we do that again here, we'll see that it's asking for our mod image path again, and it's going to ask for that destination ROM. I'm going to go ahead and close this. Let's not do this yet. And the reason is I want to show you a nice thing that we can take advantage of. If we go into our Dravis directory here, where we have our classes, games, resources, and all that, we now have a new file in here called settings.json. And we're going to open this in our notepad. And this is a JSON format, which is a JavaScript data format. If you get over the uh, the programmer part of this, it actually reads pretty clearly. We have a section here called Games, and then underneath of that we have Final Fantasy Tactics, and then the file directory that we put in for our vanilla image path, right? So it just saved that information that we put in last time when we built our Mako reactor map is save that image to this file called uh, settings.json. And you can see under mods, we have the Final Fantasy Tactics game section, Mako Reactor, and then the mod image path for that. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to grab these three lines and do Control C and press Enter and format it so that it looks nice. And we're going to paste it right in there. Instead of Mako Reactor, which was this directory in here under Mods, see how it says Mako Reactor? That exact phrase is right there. We're going to use this phrase here, end of time, and we're going to put that right here. Okay? We're going to use the same mod image path as Mako Reactor. And that's the reason we edited our, our settings. We don't have to do it. We could have done it the other way where it asks us again. But that gets kind of time consuming if you have made multiple mods. So if we've made, say, six mods, we can simply grab this section of code here and duplicate it and then just rename to my third map, my fourth map, and so on. 
This is just kind of a faster way. You're free to do it the other way too. It takes a little bit longer because you have to make sure you get the path in exactly. Whereas this, it's already here. We don't have to rewrite it or copy it or anything like that. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. So now when I go back into our Jaravis, into our mod for end of time, and I type in node space dot wipe and node space dot and patch. We type that in. We'll see that we don't get that question again because it's already in the settings. It's, it's when, when we run this command, it refers to the settings to see if that data or that information is still in there and then it uses that information. So, so we don't have to worry about that anymore. Now we have done the exact same thing that we did for our Mako reactor map, right? And what that means is that now our destination still has the attack out information that tells the game to use map 118 for that event, but now it is using our end of time map and binding the end of time map to map 118. Okay, so it's the exact same thing that we did for our Mako reactor. We're just now using the end of time. So let's load up our emulator and verify that that's what's happening. We'll open destination just like before. I'll hit F3 to load my save state and I'll turn on F4. We'll do the frame skip thing, which is really nice. We can just speed through this a little bit faster. You will be doing a lot, so every second that you save counts. And here we go. This is the end of time map that I've created. And now this is loaded into that slot 118. And in fact, if we go and look at the disk image in CD Mage, let's do that now. I want to show you that We now have a subfolder under map called end of time. And when we click on these, these are our EO time. This is what Dravis added. Now, one thing to know is if you have CD Mage open and you try to run this command, it's going to give you an error because Windows is already using that file for CD Mage. And that error will seem kind of confusing. And Dravis won't tell you exactly what the problem is. But that's what the error will be. So make sure that you close CD Mage before running this command again. So that's all there is to it, right? So we've created two maps, Mako Reactor and End of Time, and we slot in them both in. If we wanted to, we can go in here and make End of Time on map 119 and put Mako Reactor map on 118 if we wanted to. But what we're going to do, because the problem with that is that now you have to change your attack out to have that event load up 119 instead of 118 every time. While you're testing your maps, it's useful to just keep them all on this 118 map because vanilla doesn't use it. And then you can just run your command right here to change between those maps. So the next thing that I want to talk to you about is the efficiency of this process. Uh, Going into these subdirectories and typing in node space wipe and node and doing that every time that you make a small change. If we go in here and we make just a small change to this, if maybe the texture doesn't look quite right and we modify the texture or we move these because it wasn't playing right or whatever, and then we want to test that out in game, which you should always be test, 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 test your map every step along the way. Make sure that your polygons are showing right. Make sure that your textures are showing right. Make sure your light looks good. Make sure units are traveling where they're supposed to. Test, test, test. Part of that test, test, test is we want to make sure that we can test, test, test fast. We don't want to spend half of our time waiting for emulator windows to go up and typing in commands and all of that. So I'm going to show you a way to let us test quickly. So we've got these two mods set up, right? We have our end of time and Mako reactor map. And we were doing quite a bit of process. So if we were to modify our end of time map, what we'd have to do is every time we save it, we would have to go here. We'd have to go into end of time, delete these files, copy these files over, rename them back to EO time, and then run our command. It's a process, right? That's not a fun process either. 
So let's automate that. What's really nice is that we can write batch files in Windows. And what batch files are is a series of commands that you would normally type into your command line here. Say, if I were to type the command pause and press enter, the only thing that the pause command does is ask me to press any key to continue. And once I do, it returns us to our uh, directory structure. There's a bunch of different commands in here. We looked at, say, cd and dir. Uh, we looked at, for example, npm install, that's a command. This whole thing, node.wipe, that's a command too. So what we can do is we can create a batch file where we put all of those commands one after another into just a plain text document. And when we run that batch file, it will automatically for us type in all of these commands and execute those commands. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to open a third window here to the same directory. And the first thing that I'm going to do is right click here and go down to new and type text document. And it's going to ask us for a name. Now if you don't see this txt here, we want to go to view and make sure that file name extensions are checked because if it's unchecked, you're going to see new text document with nothing on the end. And if we change this to myfile.bat and we turn this back on file name extensions, well, we've named our file myfile.bat.txt. That's not what we want. And if we try to open this, it's going to open it in our normal notepad. So make sure that file extensions are showing. And we want to name this make mako.bat. And it's going to ask if you want to change the file extension. Say yes. And now it's a batch file. And if we run it, nothing really happens. It's completely empty. In fact, Windows will kind of complain about it. So let's open this in our notepad. You can use just like before Windows Notepad. And let's do something simple here. Let's type in dir and then pause. And we're going to save it. And now we can run makemako.bat. And you'll see that it automatically typed in the command dir right there. It was in the same directory that we ran the batch file from. See desktop map tutorial, desktop map import tutorial. It started in that directory and then it entered the command dir just like we typed here. And when it was done listing the directory information, it then typed in the command pause for us and then it stopped and says press any key to continue. And now as soon as we press any key to continue, this window will close just like that. So what we want to do here then is actually type in the commands that will copy our, our working files into the mod directory. And then we want to execute the patch command for node, right? So the first step is copying those files. And we want to use a command called xcopy. That's the name of the command. Now in, in here, if we type in xcopy, we'll see this as invalid number of parameters. The way that command lines work is you have command, space, parameter, 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 etc. And different commands will take in a different number of parameters. So parameters are basically just kind of variables or data that you can put in there. And the way that xcopy will work is we do xcopy space and then our source file, the, the complete path to our source file, and then destination file. And what it'll do is copy the source file into the destination file position. So I'm going to go ahead and close this, and we're going to do that here. So we know that we want to take, we want to take these files here, end of time 7, end of time 8. Actually, we want to do this with Mako Reactor, right? Because we named this Make Mako. So we want to take Mako Reactor 7, Mako Reactor 8, and Mako Reactor GNS and put them into, go all the way back here, and put them into this directory here. Let's make these a little bit wider so you can see a little bit easier. We want to copy these into here and have them named as this. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that now. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller so that we can see all three windows together. 
we're going to minimize this one and we're going to just click up here and say control C and control V now one thing that you need to know is remember that parameters are separated by spaces we'll see that custom maps has a space in there and so does Mako reactor the way that this will read is Xcopy will say this is the first parameter and this is the second parameter so it's going to try and find a file it's going to try to find a file at this path and then save it into this path that's not at all what we want so we can get around that just by adding quotes around this field okay so now it'll treat this as one parameter even though there's spaces in there and then at the after mocker reactor we want to do backspace and just like we did earlier when looking for our path uh, for our disk image we want to copy and paste right like that so this is our our source file mocker reactor 7 in this path and then we want to save it as mreact 7 so we'll do the same thing here again we want to do quotes around it let's make this a little bit bigger so that it doesn't wrap so much there we go and we'll do backspace here and we want to call it mreact7 there we go and now one more thing that's going to happen is because this file already exists mreact7 the batch file when it runs this command is going to ask us if we want to overwrite mreact7 and we do right of course every time we want it to overwrite that file that's why we're running this batch file so we can add a setting if we type forward slash y here it will skip that check it won't ask us if we want to overwrite that file anymore it'll just do it so that's definitely what we want so now we can just grab this whole thing copy it go down two lines and then just change the sevens into eights because the rest of the command is the same and then we're going to do the same thing for our gns so instead of dot eight we'll do dot gns dot gns and we'll save it we're also going to type in a pause command because without it our batch file will just close and now that we've done that let's see what happens when we run make mako.bat we'll see that it ran the first command and there's a lot of letters here because these path names are so long right but it will tell us that one file copied into mako reactor 7 and it did the same thing with 8 and it did the same thing with GNS it copied this one file so we know that that part of it's working now and in fact if we were to go in here and open our Mako reactor map and let's do just any kind of change it doesn't matter I'll save this we can see that we saved our map and if we look here the time has updated to 3 10 20, a.m. which is the time that I'm working on this now there was I took a break earlier so that's why it was 7 a.m. before now it's 3 a.m. that doesn't matter anyway you'll see that it updated the date modified of these two files now Ganesha doesn't modify GNS files at this time so this is still an older date uh, timestamp but if we look down here, it says 9-7-2021, which is the last time that I modified this file. If we make our Mako reactor map, now look down here, these two updated to date modified. That's how we know that these files have been updated into this, this, uh, into this folder. So we know that our xcopy commands are working now. That's awesome. Well, now we want to actually run the command, the node patch command, right? And we can't do that anywhere. We know that we have to do it in this directory we have to be in this directory to do that so let's go up here and control c copy this path and we're going to use the command that i talked about earlier called change directory cd we're going to put it in quotes and we're going to paste that in and make sure that quotes are on both sides now this command will tell it to change to this directory before we do anything more so if we were to go in here and type dir and run our make mako bat we'll see that the first thing that it does is it copies our three files like it did before and then 
Here it changed into this directory. See where it says CD and then this directory name. And now when we look at this bit before the uh, greater than sign, that's the directory we're in now. Whereas before the directory we're in was desktop slash map tutorial and it ends with the greater than sign. Well now we're in this directory backslash mods backslash mako reactor and then we hit dir and we can see the files that are in that directory import index and mod js just like that so we know we're in the right directory now here and this is where we type in our command and that's it okay so we're going to run this again and we can see that it did that command node wipe node patch and then because we have that pause command it'll say press any key to continue so i'll press any key here and now if we load up our emulator now if we load our emulator here we'll see that we are now going to load the mako reactor map with that small change that we did where we moved one of those polygons up it's a little hard to see because of the perspective, but you can see it right there in the middle, how it's been raised up. And we did that. We made this change in Ganesha. Now, just to, as a proof of concept, we've come this far. Might as well prove it. So we'll save this. We'll close our emulator. We'll make Mako. We'll hit Enter and load our emulator again. And there we go. Our polygon that we had lifted up, we put back into place, and it has been represented inside of our emulator. It's that easy. So let's go ahead and close this. And of course, we want to do the same for make uh, our end of time. So we'll just create a copy of this, call this make end of time. We'll open this in our notepad. And we want to change our directories here. So we can do this pretty quickly. End of time. So we know that our folder is called end of time. So everywhere where we're doing Mako Reactor, we'll just replace it with end of time from our sources. We want to replace these file names, the dot sevens and so on, on these first lines. We'll copyright like that. And then in our mods folder, we want to copy this. This is our second line, the, the destination of each of these files. And we want to change this part to uh, end time, right? And we want to change all these mreacts to EO time. So if you look at this, it's the same exact command. We're just, instead of copying our Mako reactor, we're copying end of time, end of time 7, which is this file. And we're pasting it into EO7, or EO time.7, right? And then when we change our directory, we want to make sure that we're going into the end of time directory right here. And then this command stays exactly the same. So we'll hit enter. And now watch when we run make end of time. This will happen super fast. We'll hit enter and we'll load into our emulator. And now it's that easy and that fast to check our maps and to update our maps and to test them. The last thing that uh, we want to do is this might be kind of annoying for you for it to keep popping up like this every time. If we go into our batch file here and we just remove the pause on both of these just remove that pause. Now when we run the batch file, it will automatically close. Boom. Boom. Now when we run this in our emulator, we, we'll get exactly what we're looking for. Alright, I know this was a long tutorial, 
I hope that you learned something, not just about Final Fantasy Tactics modding and putting your maps in the game, but something, you know, a little bit more about writing batch files, a little more about the command line, maybe something about Node. Uh, every bit of knowledge is nice, right? So, have fun, and can't wait to see what kind of maps you make. Thank you.